Hey, babe. Hello, all, and welcome to the Affluent Marriage Podcast. You're listening to one profit coach and one educator talk about living a rich and full marriage through wealth building generational principles, authentic two way communication strategies, and everything in between to become a couple that lives in love and walks in wealth. Your legacy begins here. Hi. Good evening. Hi. How are you? You know, I'm good. It's been a good weekend. I went Labor to the Day spa weekend. today. Yesterday I went to the spa. You did? I did. If you guys have not gone to a spa, I, I highly encourage you to look and see in your area if you have a day spa. Now this one was in Virginia? This one was in Virginia. I'm going to go ahead and give them a shout out. King's Spa in Virginia. In It's by Tyson's Corner. So you I don't were there. You know. All day. All day long. It's like open you from, got your money's worth. Yes. It's open from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. And their weekend price is $70. $70. That's incredible. <laughs> and it had like it was it was really interesting. It had like a, a like a lot of saunas. Like I don't even know, like over 10 saunas that you could go in. And then when you go in, like they have like they have like water, like they have baths, like but I'm trying to explain this. It's like, it's amazing. They have saunas, they have steam rooms, they have outside, they have like, like almost like a warm bath almost where they have like hot tubs and then they have like thermal jets where you can sit in them and there's several of them. So it's not just like only one or two for the property. They have like a ton of them where you can sit and enjoy talking to your friends and like press a button and the thermal jets come on and you literally feel like you're in a little mini jacuzzi tub by yourself with your friends, just hanging out, having a conversation. And it was, and then it has a cafeteria and you would think that a spa would have like salads and like cucumber water and like orange, you know, just stuff that's like just super healthy. It had burgers and like Korean food and ramen. And it was, it had a media room with big old recliner chairs and That's tranquil cool. music. Yeah. I'm just sitting here thinking to myself, how weird and bizarre am I that none of that sounds good I to me? I know it doesn't to you. I, as I, I cannot <laughs> stand saunas way too hot for me. Jets and bubbling and hot, like hot tubs. Oh I never last gosh. long. I, love hot I just, that's not my scene. That's the not media room sounds really cool. And obviously food is amazing. Yeah. So I don't, that doesn't sound I don't good think... to me at all. Now tell me this because I've purchased gifts for you in the past where I send you to like you do. a massage parlor, a spa, yes. whatever. Yes. If you went to get a massage at the 70, like do you pay extra for that? Oh, good question. Because I know you didn't get a massage. I didn't this time. I wonder, I feel like they have packages that you can order that would be all inclusive where you can get the, the day spa and you also get to reserve like a massage or something or other so that's probably okay, what would so happen you paid 70 to get in and you got to experience everything in the building but yeah. if you wanted some type of one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. personal like massage mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. then you're probably going to pay, you extra to pay for that. more okay yeah but i mean the prices were very fair i mean i i was okay with that but honestly if i just wanted to escape there was plenty of places to sit and just be tranquil and just be deep in your thoughts um, and if I just wanted to get away and feel like I was on a tropical vacation without being on a tropical vacation, <laughs> um, that would be, that's where I'm going. And for 70 bucks and 50 bucks on the weekday, sign me up. That's easy. Like that's, that's, that's a no brainer. I should do that monthly. <laughs> like it's a no brainer. If it helps you and your mental health to just recoup and I relax, mean, then it do it. Was and I went with my girlfriends. It was a birthday party thing. And it was funny because as I was explaining it to you, I think this is important before we go into what we talk about today too. When I was talking to my, uh, when I was telling you about all the things that we did, I, in my mind was like, he is not going to find any of this. At least you know me. Like exciting at all. Like I just, I know you enough to know that that's not, that's not your bougie. And this is something that I think is important before we go into what we talk about. Cause I think it aligns perfectly is that you have to know your bougie. Everybody, especially your spouse that you're speaking to, your partner has a different bougie than you do. And it is not a bad thing if, like, you don't have to understand it. It's just respect it. Know that it's there. Know that it's just important for that person to have that type of bougie. So for me, it does make me feel completely relaxed, zen, focused, a lot more friendly 
if I'm able to take a day and go to a place like this where I'm able to go into some like jacuzzis or I'm able to go to a sauna or I'm able to just like be with my own thoughts in silence for a moment, like that helps me be the very best ver- like version of myself. But for you... I think I would take that $70 and buy tickets to the NBA yeah. and sit in the nosebleed section and watch a game. And yeah. for sure, yours is probably, you know, in terms of time, like you're there for 12 hours. Mm-hmm. I'm only going to be there for three hours. And that's okay. But if it's... If it's your bougie and that's what gets you happy, like it doesn't, it really is okay. Um, And so I think it's important that in your money management, it reflects your version of your bougie, whatever your values are. So it, it doesn't really, like it just has to make you feel happy and know that you and your spouse are reflected in your money management plan. If you can look at it and go, yeah, I feel really good about this. I feel like I'm getting a little bit of myself. I'm able to rejuvenate myself or whatever it is that I need to do, even if it's only a sliver of it, you know, or I can save up for it. That to me is, it's worth it to be in my budget. Whereas if you looked at a map of what you've spent in the last 30 days, especially if you're not looking at it on a consistent basis, you would find that your values are not focused. They're all over the place. And it's no wonder why you're feeling very disheveled, out of sorts, you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm shopping, but I'm just shopping out of like convenience. Like I'm shopping out of like just angst and whatever, but I'm not shopping with purpose, you know, like, or I'm, I'm not, I'm doing these things without abandon and, or with abandon, I should say. So then it, it just feels very disheveled. By the time you look at everything, you're like, oh, that's how I spent my money. That's how I, and then you just feel even worse about yourself. I don't know. I just think it's that intention of saying, this is my bougie and this is what I want to spend my money towards. You just enjoy it that much more in my personal opinion. Well, talking about spending money the way you want to spend money, look at us, right? We made a decision to postpone our trip in December yeah, because we wanted to spend our money differently. Mm-hmm. And here we are. We made that decision. We were supposed to pay up this month, correct? Mm-hmm. Yep. September 1st. Think, we were supposed yeah. to pay like four, four or five grand this month. Yeah. And now here we are in September looking at about four grand. Yeah. And instead of going on that trip, now we have the money to furnish our space for a midterm rental. Which I, I'm i so excited about. Like my va- like we've talked about this. That's the reason why we made that choice. We thought to ourselves, I would feel much better getting that done first. I would feel so much more fulfilled getting that mu- that done first and then going on a trip later on. Absolutely. And being like, yeah, we did it. Rather than going on the trip first for that instant gratification and saying, yay, we're doing it. And then being able to be in this place where we're able to furnish the space and get out like later on in the spring. Like that just didn't feel right, as good to us. when you're profit minded, you're going to get to that destination mm-hmm. sooner. If we would have went on the trip first, then we're putting ourselves backwards and we right. don't have the extra profit to build back up. Right. Like it's just, you know, you're putting the cart behind the horse. Yeah. So, and this is again, our... I just did what you did. Did You didn't even hear it cart behind the horse cart in front of the horse yeah ah see cart i don't even know before the horse see yeah, but i understood see, I wanted to your say purpose before i said behind oh but see i understood your purpose so it just didn't mm. even it didn't even like well i'm still gonna call you out when you mess it up that's fine you can call me out but i yeah, enjoy doing it i just think <laughs> i just think it's important for people to make sure their values and their bougie is represented in their money plan you will feel so much more fulfilled and you will be so you'll you'll just feel so much more like, yeah, this is the right decision for me. And nobody has to give you validation. Like, it's the best. My clients will tell me, Do you think this is what I should do? And I'm like, does it make you happy? That's it. Does it make you feel like you're getting ahead on all the things you want to get on? Who cares what I think? It is your life. <laughs> right? It is your life. Yeah. How do we say this? You you make way too much money yeah to to, spend it on things you don't care about mm -hmm. to please people you don't even like Mm -hmm. right you got to do what makes sense for you yeah when you make your money i don't care if it doesn't make sense to the person next to me we bought a minivan a lot of people are like what in the world are you doing buying a minivan yeah that's what we wanted that's what we wanted to do that's what sparked joy for us that's what we did did. and i'm i'm very happy with why did you why was your first purchase a, a condo Why'd you get a, because that was our plan. That was Mm -hmm. our, that's what we wanted. That's Mm -hmm. what we went after. That's what made us happy. Yeah. Like it doesn't have to make you happy. And the reason why that condo, we're not trying to be people pleasers. No. And the, the reason why for us that condo made sense, this condo that we're in right now is because a, 
opportunity for income, right? We knew eventually it could be something we could either sell or turn around really easy to make a profit or easy to rent out. So we knew it had potential too. We knew it was way below our loan offer. Like we, we got off, like we were told that we could spend way more and we decided to Upwards spend to 400,000. We the time. spent a hundred and thir- 130 grand, 145 grand. And uh, people thought we were absolutely insane to do that. But that gave us the ability to have more flexibility if I decided to say, I want to stay home or I want to, I want to, you know, have a business or I want to do something. Cause I knew if there was any person who was going to be wavering and what they were going to do, it would be me. Cause I knew that I was going to be the one having the kids. <laughs> and so I knew that I might have the, it was a dream of mine, but I didn't know what I wanted it to do to be. So I was like, I want to be able to, I might want to stay home for a year. And we can't do that if we're house poor. If we, <laughs> I can't do that if I have to bring in an additional like three, $4,000 every single month to pay for mortgage. I can't do that. And see, that's affluence. Affluence is all about being able to have a choice. Yeah. You had a choice mm-hmm. to make that decision and you, you went with that, mm-hmm. right? Affluence is not necessarily living this extravagant lifestyle a lot of affluent people live well below their means Mm, yes so that they have that choice exactly do i want to buy this car do i want to take this trip do i want to splurge on this dining experience they have that choice Mm -hmm. because every day isn't spend as much money as you can right they're living below their means most of the time and when they decide to make that decision they get to make it right because they've lived affluently they've Mm. made affluent decisions it's interesting because a lot of people are seeing these affluent people whoever they are making these big grand like for example when we move and move into a next place people are going to see the the results of the hard work that we no one know like no one knows the the, the conversations we're having in the back in the back you know the back office you know the, and the, the sacrifices and the sacrifices we're making and and the things we had to be like oh maybe you were going to do this maybe we'll postpone this like, no one knows unless you're listening to this podcast the stuff that we have to have conversations about people a lot of people are only seeing the result wow they got that car man how they do that <laughs> isn't she just I hear this all the time. Just a stay at home mom. Isn't she just, doesn't she have that little business? How are, he's a teacher. Little. How are they doing that? Right? So you get people who will show up for the results and be like, how you do that? And I'm like, you're not willing to do what we just did six months before this. Like, You're not willing to live that lifestyle. And that's the reason why you're not seeing those types of results in your life. You're seeing it spread out all over the place, like a messy, like, trail behind you it has no form it has no like order to it it's just all over the place instant gratification all over the place but no real purpose and that's in your values are not not aligned and that's the reason why you're constantly feeling unfulfilled in your finances this is way off I'm, like, it's really not because <laughs> we're talking about a written plan today so yeah. In the last free episode, we talked about what's wrong with our budget or why isn't our budget working. And right. in our last grand fan, we talked about how often, how often you should check your budget. So we've really been honing in on this written plan. And today we're going to just kind of go into detail a little bit further and talk about some of the things that you should look to have inside of your written plan. Yeah. So we're going to break down just some of the categories. I do have some average expenses here. Mm. We talked about that before. More or less, I feel like we talked about percentages. Yeah. This time, I kind of just have hard numbers. Okay, good. Uh, national averages. And again, a national average, it takes averages from high and the low areas, cost mm-hmm. of living areas, and low cost of living areas, and kind of gives you the middle. So if it sounds like what a one bed, one bath rental mm-hmm. would be like for your area, great. If it's way off, like I Understand. looked at the number. Yep. Hey, I'm in Maryland. Like it's way more expensive here mm-hmm. than the numbers that I'm seeing. Yep. I was actually just telling someone about that when we get to them. Uh, she was talking about how, hey, she was like, hey, Kim, what's the what's the percentage of how much I should put towards like housing? And so I gave her the percentage and I said, but listen, take that with a grain of salt. You live in a space that is way more expensive. It, the cost of living is is a lot more. So you're going to have to take from another category in order to bump up how much you're able to live and, you know, live. It's just going to be the way it is for you. And that's the reason why a national average is just that. It's just an average. So use it as a as a goalpost or as like a hmm, this is a good place to keep me in check, but it is not the end all be all for you. 
but you do got to keep yourself in check. Like if you're looking to buy a house in an expensive area, you do want it to be below like that 30% mark. Mm-hmm. Like I, I know it's a more expensive home, but if you can't afford it, you're not trying to be house poor. Oh, but absolutely. I get what you're saying for rent. Like if, if rent's more expensive, then it might eat up more. That's what we were referring to. We were income. talking about rent, but all right. So what you're saying. let's get into this. Some of the things that you need to have in your budget. A lot of these you're going to be like, uh, yeah, duh, of uh, course, duh, duh, duh. but don't care. Going to tell about it anyway. Because guess what? If you already knew it, are you doing it? And if you're not, well, reminder. So, some of these early ones are just kind of some of the necessities, some of the things you, that you need to cover first mm-hmm. and foremost when you're going through your written plan. Everyone should know this one, but your housing. Mm-hmm. Let me say this, or your income. The median household income across the nation is $70,000, 784. Mm. And the definition of a household is just the amount of people occupying like within an apartment or within, it's just like, so the unit it's, it could be two people. It could be one, a household could be two people. Mm -hmm. Household could be one person. It could be four people. Mm -hmm. There's no true way to determine. It's just like that building. Like Mm -hmm. there's apartment 22 is a household. Mm -hmm. However many people are in there, how many people are in it. But on average across the nation, $70,784. I feel like that's really low. It does seem low, right? Yeah maybe only one person's earning mm. and the other person isn't mm-hmm. maybe both have. And again, it's an average, right? So you're going to have the high earners that make mm-hmm. multiple six figures. And then you're going to have the people that don't make anything and they're unemployed, mm-hmm. but they live in a house. Yeah. I think that gives you a really good snapshot as to where we are right now. This is why it's good to look at these percentages often. So you can see, kind of get a pulse of what are people living at? Right. Look, looking at right now, what are people living like right now? Is seventy thousand dollars a year is the average. So that means majority of people are living there. That's majority of America is living in that range. And I mean, we, as we look at these percentages and we see how much that costs, that doesn't get you very far in it, a lot of different no, places. No, it does not. It does not. I will say mm. my income last year as an educator was around that mark. I'm in Maryland, so educators make a little bit more in Maryland than they would in somewhere like South Carolina where they're only making like 40 grand, which Mm -hmm. is insane to me. But I would say that my checks were around Mm $1,700 when I was making 70 grand, I want to say. So you imagine that's like 3,400. Like let's just say four grand a month. Let's just say four four grand a month. Yeah, for a family. So let's go through some of these numbers. Hmm. Housing, right? Of course, you know, your rent or your mortgage payment should be in your written plan. It's going to be one of the largest categories in your budget. On average, people are spending anywhere from fifteen hundred to two thousand five hundred per month on their rent or their mortgage, their utilities, their property taxes, their insurance, all of that. And according to um what is this, worldpopulationreview.com, dot com, one thousand three hundred twenty two is the average rent. Hmm for like a one bed, one bath. Mm, yeah. I know that for us, colleagues of mine have looked for one beds, one bath in Maryland and it goes for around like seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars $1,800. Yeah. But 1322 sounds nationwide. That's probably right. Yeah. I, I mean, bed, I, bath. it's definitely over a grand. Gone are the days of like people being able to pay like 600 bucks for a one bed, one bath. Like even, I remember even our one bed, one bath that we lived in on main street was was 12, 1200, 1250. I think it was 1250. I think we tried to negotiate it down to 1200, but then he said no. <laughs> so it was like 12, it was 1250, I think a month. So, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, and that's one bed, one bath. And that was a tiny one bed, one bath. Yes. I'm sure you can find things below a thousand, but the area it's, is going to be sketchy or yeah. the, the rental property is going to be sketchy. I think that that matters My brother too. lived in a property that was probably like seven, $800 a month in Pennsylvania. But that thing was ghetto. Yeah. Like there was like a boiler in the middle of his living room. He had like two small little bedrooms and like, I, it was a full bathroom, but I mean, it was the size of like a half bath, like a half, wow. like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. a, just a sink, <laughs> Yeah, just a sink and a toilet. And yeah. then like they somehow shoved a shower in there. Like it, 
but I, I he loved that place maybe because it costs 700 800 a month yeah so you can but i just i i, no. I think that, you know what and i think that really makes a difference too when we're talking about this like nationwide average this nationwide average is not your your run of the mill or i shouldn't say run of the mill your nicer builder grade apartments that are like decorated to the nines like this is also including the rents of the places like you just mentioned that are kind of shoved together to create <laughs> a space um and so yeah you have to think like 1322 might be like okay um but i'm looking but yeah i, I could find that but i'm going to be living in a pretty bad neighborhood or i might be not living in a place where i feel comfortable um because yeah, that's that's if we were looking for something like that, that's what it would be for us in this area where we're we're talking. If you want to get something that is like, you know, you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. You're going to be paying a lot more than that. So it's just I just find this really fascinating. Absolutely. So when you are making your written plan, it's a no brainer. Have your income on that plan, and you need to have your housing on that plan. What's yep. next, Kim? Transportation, which I think is really important, depending on if you're a person who's in the city versus a person who's in a more suburban area. It might be, you know, your car payment. It might be fuel costs. It might be um, maintenance. It might also be like bus passes, or it might be metro cards, or any of those types of things. So that all matters, depending on what type of place or you know that you are and how you get from one place to another. Um, you know, it could even be something like Uber costs because you might be taking taxis and, you know, car shares from one place to place. So this also is in there too. Um, so you want to make sure that you have maintenance ex expenses in there as well as insurances. Um, transportation is about in this considering, oh my gosh, from this study is about seven to $1,000, 700 to $1,000 per month. And that includes car payments, gas, insurance, and maintenance. Um, and I think one of the things that we're probably going to go into a little bit more in detail is the fact that there's a lot of stuff within this transportation that might be hidden um, because they're unforeseen or they are variable costs. So for example, if you're a person who is like, okay, well, I have to use Uber all the time and I don't know how much it's going to be. And it's around this much, like you should be able to come up with an average of how much you use for certain things and use that average to kind of create your budget line item. Um, knowing, understanding that there is going to be some give either positive or negative based on what's happening. Same thing with fuel and same thing with insurance. I think with a lot of times with insurance, because sometimes you can pay yearly, sometimes you can pay by, um, Annually. monthly or biannually and so a lot of times when that happens people get like they miss that completely they're like oh yeah i have my fuel costs in there that happens consistently i have you know like my car payment that happens every single month but they forget the insurance and when the insurance comes through they're like oh crap <laughs> and they totally forgot that they have to purchase that so i think between it within that seven to a thousand dollars a month is not just what you absolutely need every single month, but also what you need to save to make sure you're ready for those biannual and, um, you know, and yearly, you know, bills that come up. I think that's a very fair, I think that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Seven to eight thousand, right? Because if you just look at our situation, right? Gas, we're filling up four times a month. That's easily $50 a fill up. That's 200 bucks there. Insurance, 150. Maintenance, we put 200 aside every month. So we're already looking at, you know, half of a thousand. Yep. And that's not even talking about car payments or anything. Right. The way you make money back off of this is if you don't have a car payment. Yes. Yes. The faster so, you pay off, pay it off, the more you don't have that car payment. And we talk we, about affluent decisions. If you read Millionaire Next Door or if you read, um, shoot, my other millionaire Rich like survey. Porter. No, there's another millionaire survey. Millionaire Next Door, I believe, is written by Chris Hogan. The other one is written by... It's slipping my mind. I'll look it up. Mm -hmm. But anyways, if you look at, I read too much. So if you look at those surveys though, most millionaires, they don't have, a have car, car payments, yeah. right? They're just buying their car outright. Mm -hmm. And you say, oh, well, they have the money to do that. Well, they're also not buying new cars. Yes, there you go. They're mm -hmm. buying used cars. Mm -hmm. So they're buying something that's like three, four years old and they're not taking a car payment. Right. They're saving up, they're being responsible. Because if you buy something new, as soon as you drive it off the lot, it loses so much value. It You're just really throwing does. cash out the window, basically. The only time, and I, I will say this too, because I know there's people who are going to be like, well, then why do they even make used or new cars, right? 
sometimes we talked about this before in a fleet in a vehicles. long like before yes yeah, fleet vehicles but also sometimes it's a little bit like they get you with a lot of deals on the newer car so they will give you a whole lot of incentives but the the same thing applies if you have a payment on it you're not putting money aside to prepare, you know prepare for these maintenance costs by the time you get off the road you have now lost money on this what you think is an investment um and and you might not be able especially like i know people who do this all the time who don't have an emergency fund who don't have investments like but yet they have a brand spanking new car on the lot because they got an, a lower interest rate and they got a really good like loan on it and i'm like nope you totally missed the bigger picture so the people who actually make out on getting those newer cars are the people who have all those things in place and they are you know they have enough money that you know, let's just say their car gets off the lot and they lose 20%. They have that 20% in investments and all that stuff. They can make that back 10 times over. It's not a big deal to them. Like that's pennies to them. So to that, it's a good deal. Get a new car, right? Because it's not a big deal for you guys. Um, but for the person who does not have some of those other things in place and and for people who are just like, I don't need a new car. It always also comes down to that. Like, Nowadays, because cars are so smart, you don't need to have a brand spanking new car. Like they all pretty much have the same bells and whistles. So, um, Kim, you're only anyway. saying that because the last what three cars that we owned, we owned a '98 Civic, a 2003 Saturn Ion, and then a 2009 Nissan Rogue. So the newest car we've ever owned was at least 10 years old at yes. the time. Yep. So for sure, you're still going to get from point A to point B. You're going to have air conditioning. You're going to have music. You're going to have all the things that you need to get around. Truthfully, like this is the newest. The car that we have now is 2021. This is the newest car. It's two years old that we've ever had in either of our lives. <laughs> I'm going off track here, but one of the ways that get you into these new vehicles is to say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Graham, how's that Pacifica doing? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I don't know if you're aware of this, but there is a 2024 Pacifica out. What if I could tell you? You give us your 2021, we'll give you a 2024, and you'll keep the same payment. Mm, yes. And you're thinking to yourself, wait a minute. I get a brand new car, and my payment stays the same? Where? How is this a bad thing? Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe I should I trade this in and keep the same payment? But what you're in that moment of like, man, I could have something brand new for the same cost. It's not the same cost. It's not the same cost. Because you're not looking at the principal. Exactly. You're your looking. Term, uh -huh. right? You you were about to pay off your 2021 used vehicle. You had like 20 grand left on it or 18 grand left on it. And now they're about to put you into a 24. That's and that it. has like 40 or 50 grand on it. Uh -huh. Now your payment's the same. But that term is going to be way, way, way longer. longer. And so that's where they get you. And so those commercials, you and I always laugh at these commercials. It's, I think it's called drive time. That will be like, you control your payment and you control your down payment. And I'm like, yeah, they're, they are, they're smart. They're really, really banking on the consumer being like, yes. I control my payment, so I'm getting a deal and I control my down payments. So I can literally walk in with $100 down and pay exactly what I want to pay. I got a great deal, but you didn't. You're not thinking about the long term. Like, how long is it going to take for you to pay that off? Like, yes, you got to make, you know, a, a plan on how much you get to pay per month but not how long you get to pay. So they still win in the long run. They just gave you choice in that decision. And I think it's genius marketing, but you got to know what what they're getting at when they when they do something like that. But it's one of those things where I look at it and I'm like, oh my gosh, they probably get so many people on this one ad because people are like, yes, this makes complete sense. <laughs> so the next category is another main category that everyone obviously thinks about every single day and that is food food right so this this category is going to include all of your groceries all of your dining out and any other food related expense mm -hmm. and you can expect to pay anywhere from 500 to a thousand dollars per month in groceries and dining out i think that's that's dangerously low we spend 800 i know we spend 800 i think the average We're a family of four i know i think the average on the average consumer is way higher than that why? Why? Because five hundred to a thousand dollars per month on going on groceries, going out, and any other food related expenses. People overspend. This is this is a category that a lot of my clients, like I mean, a lot of people in general, struggle with. Let me ask you this: Would you say 
that going out to like a bar and getting drinks with your friends or like some like would you consider that dining out and groceries or would you say that's entertainment? Mm, you know what that might be entertainment. When I but, but I mean, is that what you're thinking of when you say people overspend in this category? Like, no, are you thinking about, I like, think the people social, go no, or you just mean like groceries and dining out, literally groceries and going out to eat. Hmm. Like you know, like I I I know I meet so many people who are like, oh yeah, I go out like at least two to three times a week. You know, there's the food. difference. I try not to meet people. <laughs> that's where we're different. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's my job to meet people and to ask them questions like, hey, how can I help you understand more about your money and give you the best like, you know, tools and strategies so that you don't run into these situations again. And for many of them, it's like, man, I get home really late at night. And so it's just easier for me to just, you know, hit up a Wendy's, hit up a Chick-fil-A, um, you know, go to a restaurant. I had to sit down for dinner, you know, go to a sit down dinner. And then I go out at least two or three times a month because, you know, like this happens on a consistent basis for a lot of clients. So I just feel like that thousand dollars per month is actually really low. I thought that was high, which is crazy. Yeah. I think it's low because we're, we're 800 and that's included things like diapers that included things like, Mm -hmm toilet paper and tissues and all of those things that are like major expenses in terms of groceries and you only buy them once a month but we make it happen for eight hundred dollars yeah and we use cash so we're definitely shopping deals and when the cash gets low like we talked about this in our last pod we had a little challenge we were like all right we've got three days days left until the we can withdraw bedroom. our mm-hmm. next 400 for the next two weeks and we've got 25 bucks left so Let's dig into that pantry. Let's dig into that freezer and, and see what we can come up with and scratch together and piece it all together with 25 bucks. Yep. And we, we and made we it happen. It. Yeah. Did we have to do that? No, but it was a, it was a fun challenge. It was a fun I challenge. And also it was fun. It was, it, it, our oven is People broken People probably right laughing. Now. I was like, what are these two weirdos enjoying? <laughs> Listen. Oh, trying to like make it on 25 bucks for three days. Because it's a fun, it's just fun. That's our idea of fun sometimes. It's just like, let's challenge ourselves. But also... Like our oven, I think we talked about this last time. It when it rains, it pours, right? This is does not change to pet does not matter how much you're making. <laughs> it does happen. Our stovetop works, our oven decided not to work. We tried to remedy it. The baking element and the broil element inside, yes. Yeah. It does not work. We tried to fix it. it does not work. I did. I, I did the research on YouTube and I found out how to replace the baking element. Went I'm ahead and did you. that. Yeah. Still didn't work. But it turned out to be the control panel inside mm-hmm. the oven, mm-hmm. which would be like $150 to replace. And at that point, I'm not going to be able to do that. I don't have that type of skill work. So I'd have mm-hmm. to hire somebody to come out. It'd be about 300 bucks, 400 bucks. It, you, I you might, might as, as well, well get, get a new one. Six, five, six hundred dollar oven. Yeah. And plug it in. And just get a new one. So that's what we're going to be doing in the month of September. But I just think it's really interesting, right? Because we've had to, when you don't have something, you find that you have to think a little bit harder. So we did not have our baking element. And it's been about two weeks now. The amount of times that we've been like, let's get a pizza. Pe- oh, man, we can't do that. And we've had to be more flexible. About- At least you actually think about it. I literally came home with a frozen pizza one day and then went to push bake and realized crap it does not work the oven doesn't work the other day well friday i bought brownies because i was like oh end of the first week of school let me get my kids and my husband some brownies we're just gonna make some brownies i'll make them with the girls and i'm like so excited and then i realized like oh crap the oven doesn't work but i used the instant pot and it was a fun experiment so what i'm saying is like it's the reason why i like these challenges is that it forces us to like think outside the box of like okay this is not how we traditional do things. So how can we create dinners, create fun ways to eat our favorite meals without using the oven? Because there's other ways for us to get to this end point. So we're finding new ways that we like to eat certain things as a result. I'm actually not like, you know, over here like, oh my God. Like, I'm just like, oh, okay. Our oven's not working. No big deal. <laughs> no, because anything you can do in the oven, you can pretty much do on a stove you can. top. It's just nice to set it and forget it inside yeah. the oven. Yeah. Personal care. Personal so care. This category includes expenses related to personal care items such as haircuts, makeup, toiletries. All right. So we're going to say 100 to $300 per month. Too low? Yes. Yeah. I think for a lot of people, that's too low that's as well. That's so low. So Some, I, if there's any women who are listening to this, they're like, what? A hundred. The, that's like $100. one trip to the salon. Oh, so seriously. <laughs> I used to pay 
to get my hair cut. Mm-hmm. And it would be $40 for this haircut. And then you tip and everything. Like It's expensive. Yeah. Even as a man. Because mm-hmm. I, I know you, you'd you go and get your hair done and it would be well over 100 Yeah. But to me, 40, 50 bucks is expensive. So I went ahead and just started cutting my own hair. Mm-hmm. Now I'm I'm married, so I don't have to try that hard. So you probably look at my haircuts and you're like, dear Lord. It's not bad. It's a good thing that you're already bagged because. You know what? I should, I should take you to go get like an actual barber. Like get, go to get your hair cut before we go to Cancun. Next there you month. go. And then we, we'll do one cut yeah, well, every we'll quarter and I'll just maintain it. Well, that'll look great for when we do our pictures. Sure. If they do it right, Oof. they can't they do it like me. If they don't do it right, that'll be slap a number four guard. <laughs> Actually, I'm two guard on my on my hair, mm-hmm. four guard on the beard. That's it. See, but the one time, the one time I had him go, I sent him like I was like, oh, go get your hair cut before I engage In my photos. Yes, and he told him he told the barber exactly what he wanted, and the barber just completely disregarded it. <laughs> He did. He just shaved just my head, shaved basically. Not a baldy, head. but he took it down low. He took it. Down. I was pretty upset. <laughs> but I thought he looked and so good. I don't know if it's because I was upset and Kim I is like low-key attracted to me when I'm, I'm I'm angry. attracted to you all the time, but when you're upset, it's a different type it's of attraction. It's a different type of attraction. I don't know. So I don't know if it's just because I was fuming or if because my hair actually looked nice, but you were feeling me that I day. I was like, I'm like, And I you. wanted nothing to do with it. And that's the haircut he has now. <laughs> Because I found it was easy to recreate. Yep. So I don't pay for all that to say I don't pay for my haircuts. I do, however, pay for toiletries. Yes. Uh, and I do pay for other personal expenses. But so for me, and maybe this is just me as a man, or maybe I'm just unique, 100 to 300 doesn't seem like, like it sounds like a good amount of money for me. Mm. For you, Mm-mm. you're looking here. Mm-mm. Tell me about this. I, Why is this too low? And it's not even that I, I spend... Listen, let's talk about this. What do I have every single month go towards my hair care and my um gr- and my shopping? You've got forty dollars to hair care and seventy five dollars to shopping. That's every what a hundred and fifteen. Hundred and fifteen dollars just to me mm-hmm. every single month. Now, do I use that every single month? No. So you got me there. But you got nails, toes. But eyebrows. I don't do that every month. But if I did, if I went to go get my nails done, mustache and my eyebrows. <laughs> In my eyebrows. I don't have a mustache. Um, if I did all of that and I got my hair done, like I got a blowout, it'd be well over $300 just for that. Wow. Easy. Like, cause getting my hair blown out to do a silk press is, is, is $150 just on its own. And to get my nails done and to get my, like my brows done would probably be, another 50 60 bucks or more there's i just i feel in that i don't don't normally ever do them all at the same time but like i would say personal care also includes toiletries right so like if i go and i go to the store and i grab you know like deodorants deodorant pads any of those types of things that i need i guess for me a lot of that bleeds into groceries sometimes for me true i kind of view those things as groceries but they are 100 percent personal care yeah so i i don't know and i'm like trying to think of other things like i and that's not even including if i i'm not a makeup girly right like i just bought something from sephora i was very excited about my my lipstick choice that i just found yesterday that i was like oh my god this matches and it's wonderful i don't do that often that was only 15 bucks but i don't spend a lot of money on on makeup but if you did if i did that would that three hundred dollars would be blown out of the water. Yeah, I just bought like a bottle that's like five in one. I don't even know what all the things are. I just know I think there's like body wash, mm-hmm. hair condition. I don't even know what the other things are. Maybe it's deodorant too. I don't know. But I just <laughs> the, the bigger the one. number, the bigger the number, the better. Like yeah. I just like how many more things can you shove in a bottle that I can just save money? And I wish save they time? did more of that with women. But everything is like a la carte. Maybe it's like toothpaste too. I just got to try it on everything. <laughs> I don't know. It's all in one. All in one. That's what they need more of then. That that would make that personal care go down big time. Um, but yeah, I think that's <laughs> dangerously low. <laughs> Entertainment. So this category includes anything related to movies, concerts, hobbies. 200 to 500 per month, Kimberly. I think that's a little high. Wow. People like to party. But yeah, like I was going to say, if you're a person... Like you just mentioned. Now, who's going out? Yeah, you know, like a couple of drinks, mm-hmm. you know, you buy a drink for your friends or whatever. All of a sudden, you're looking at your bill and you're like, oh man, I spent 
70 80 bucks on this friday night yep that that is probably where that two to five hundred dollars comes from um because it's certainly not movies and these are lifestyle things because nobody's buying food from the movie theaters anymore they're just bringing their own stuff in the theater right <laughs> that's what i do <laughs> just bring a little backpack <laughs> concerts how much is that t-swift stuff? concert since Ooh. you're into t-swift oh my now? gosh guys my second video actually this is like my four i, I have another video i just didn't tell you that got up to ten thousand views Views don't equate to anything, guys. I thought you I said 10,000 you know. likes. 10,000 views. What happened? Didn't you have one that was like 160? That one's 156 views right now. 156,000 views. That's insane. Is one of my videos. But I, another one went viral and it's at 10,000 views. I, I don't go viral, guys. This is not something that I'm used to. And TikTok has been blowing my feeds up because I've started listening to Taylor Swift. Um, and... You got to start telling them about the podcast. I, I did. I did. I, I did. I, I introduced myself again whenever I get like a really big, huge batch of new followers. And I'm like, hey, just so you guys know, this is who I am. And this is what you're getting into. You're going to hear about my podcast. And people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to hear more about it. So like, I just need hey. to go ahead and put a link up there. So if you're new from that. Welcome Swifties. <laughs> that TikTok. Welcome Swifties. I'm having so much fun, though. It's really fun just to get lost in an, a new artist but tickets to someone like taylor swift beyonce or something like that is gonna run you like four five six hundred sometimes up towards to a thousand dollars and there are expensive hobbies too right if you're into like golfing a lot of yes. people enjoy like that's an expensive, that's an expensive hobby, hobby right yeah. and there's a pickleball. lot of upkeep. <laughs> pickleball there's a lot of upkeep you know with your apparel with yeah. your shoes with your clubs like cute there's tennis skirts I mean, I want a cute tennis court. I don't even. So depending on play. your leisure activity, like it, it could be an expensive hobby. That's very true. If, even if you're a person who needs to like likes to paint or something like that, it can be very expensive to keep up with those types of things. Or you can be cheap like me and just play the same couple of free video games over and over and all over day, every again. Day. Play pickup basketball. I it's think. Free. I think that this is something that's really important here. And again, what we said here is that you need to take this with a grain of salt. And it really has to do with your lifestyle. If you're not a person who goes out to concerts every quarter, or if you're not a person who has a bunch of hobbies, if maybe your hobby is reading books, and so really the only expense you have in that entertainment is Audible. That's a $12 a month thing. You're good. Like you, most of that, then some of that percentage or some of that money might filter into another part of your categories that you're going after. So that's what we're saying here is that these are just like averages. And as you kind of, you have to find your value base that makes sense for you. So think yes. of it as a pie chart. This is national average pie chart of where everything is going. But yours is going to look very individualized to you, your goals, and your what, what you want, what you right. desire. If you want to spend $500 on entertainment, there's nothing wrong with that. No. You do you, but you're probably going to spend a lot less in some other category. Yes. You're going to have that six in one body hair wash, whatever thing like <laughs> me. For, like You're going to have no personal care. Yes. And you're going to be all entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know who's going to want to be around you because you probably stink, but hey. Hey. Now, do we even want to tell people how like boring we are with entertainment? No, dude. I'm. What are you talking about? We're fun. Can you tell people what we spend money on every month for entertainment? Tell people all the movies we go to. Tell people all the concerts we tell go to. Tell people what? Exactly. Tell people what. No. tell people what, Kim. We are some boring people. We're not boring. I think our entertainment, we go to movies. Hulu? We go to movies. When's the last movie you've seen? We go to movies. Name the, I can't even. Little Mermaid. Okay, that's you and your daughter. Okay. <laughs> I legitimately don't, you're going to laugh. The last movie that I think I've seen in theaters, Kim, was two years ago. It was the start of our daughter's kindergarten year, and I went to see Paw Patrol the movie. That was not the last movie you saw. <laughs> I think it's the last movie I've seen. No, it was not. I stopped going to see the Marvel movies with friends since yeah, we had kids. Since Because they go kids. to the midnight release or whatever. Yeah, we I stopped doing do that. that. We stopped doing that. So I, oh, God, are the Paw days. Patrol. Paw Patrol. That was a good movie, Paw though. Paw Patrol. <laughs> It did go hard. It, it made me cry. <laughs> cartoon movies That's make me hard. cry, though. <laughs> a lot of things. Make <laughs> I don't me cry. know why it is, but Guys, cartoon movies so make me cry. <laughs> we are not. We're not entertainers. I okay, but we do save up so that when we do have something, we go on vacations. We go. We do go on vacations. That's where most of our money goes to. So, in terms of entertainment, if you're going to split that up into hobbies, 
and and you know things that we enjoy because vacation isn't on this so we know we have two more categories to talk about these are like your primary ones but but vacations okay okay so we can add that on there okay so we can mention we put more of our money into vacations yes 100 percent. that's that's where that's where our values lie now debt is another category that will be on your written plan if you hold debt so this could be anything like a credit card loan or debt, student loan, any other type of debt, auto payment, anything like that. I guess your auto payment would go with the transportation, but any debt, two to $500 per month. To me, that seems low. I feel like when we had our student loan debts, we were paying upwards to About almost like, like 800, 800, 800, 800, 800, 900 a month. Yeah. Those first few months. And that's without auto loan that's without credit mm-hmm. card that's just student loan so mm-hmm. this seems low to me i agree i think that a lot of people are paying a lot more in debt i think people wish they only had two to five hundred yeah. per month yeah and honestly it, again and i think this is this is an average yep or this is the average it should be this is an average of actual american households no this is probably what they should be okay because i was like hmm I no, feel I like that's that not that's not a reflection on what it sh- that's not a reflection on what it is. There's no way because two to five hundred dollars a month. Yeah, that would be beautiful if that's all that people had, but that's not a reality. No, that's most people. That's this is the reason, right? If you're looking, if you're thinking about this average average income of seventy grand, and you're thinking, oh, this is how that seventy grand should be split up every single month, and you're listening to the numbers and you're calculating them up in your mind or writing them down or whatever having two to five hundred dollars a month go towards debt sounds beautiful but for most people the reason why they're not able to have all the housing that they desire the you know all the flexibility in their food their transportation their personal care is because of the debt they have to pay because that category inflates because you're trying to pay off something that you borrowed from however long ago and it's like stealing your ability to actually have full category or like full savings for each of these categories that we're mentioning right i mean if you just add these up right like i said you were doing mental math as i was talking weren't you always <laughs> so i told you earlier like seventy one thousand is basically what this the median income rounds up to and for me i want to say you know a couple of years ago it was probably like 1800 17 1800 so like 3600 3600 mm-hmm. 3, a month right do we want to just take all the highs or the lows so the highs of all of these, right? Twenty five hundred for rent. Do me, do me. A thousand, no. Okay. Thousand for transportation and food. We're already at four thousand five hundred. So there you go. Three categories. You're already over. Mm. Right. Okay. Let's go with the lows. Your rent is fifteen hundred. Transportation seven hundred. That's twenty two. Five hundred for food. You're at twenty seven. Personal care is a hundred. Entertainment's two hundred. You're already at three grand. Debt, two hundred dollars. You're doing great, right? Mm-hmm. You're at thirty two hundred. Mm-hmm. And now we're going on to healthcare. That's like five hundred dollars minimum. You're already right. You're over. So you don't yeah. have any room for investments. Yeah. Yeah. Notice that that's not on there. They can't, like. Yeah. There's so little wiggle room. Yeah. If this is the median, and it is the median household income in the nation. So I think with healthcare, what a lot of people might not see, or what what might skew this data point is that many people, their health care and their insurance premiums are wrapped into their paycheck. Their, their paycheck. So it's on the bottom line. It's pre, it comes pre-tax. Out. Pre-tax? Pre-tax. I'm just, so, it, they pull so, it before you, whatever you exactly. see in your paycheck, it's already been pulled. Exactly. So that five to 1,000 is already done off the gross amount of how much you got paid. So for many people, that's already taken care of. They only have to worry about co-pays. So that's one thing that might, redeem that additional five hundred dollars but still you're like nope you've 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 spent everything (laughs) you know um so i think here's here's a question that i have for you right because a listener might be hearing this right and going okay um maybe i'm a person who makes 70 grand and i'm trying to listen to all of these amounts and going um that's not possible why is that not possible because i have debt that i have to take care of or this can this for some people can feel like a doom and gloom type of feeling because they're recognizing that they are way over on many of these categories and they're like, well, how do I remedy this situation? So I want to just like pause and just kind of talk about some things 
that we can say to that person who's kind of having that like come to Jesus moment right now? <laughs> Baby steps. Like it's it's yeah. it's one foot in front of the other. Like the very first thing, it's just like being in an AA program. Like the mm-hmm. very first thing is admittance. Yeah. Like you need to admit like, all right, hi, my name's Dan. I have a problem. Like mm-hmm. you have to admit where you are, what's your present circumstance. Once you can see and you can identify, this is where I am, Mm -hmm. then you can start to problem solve and say, this is where I need to go. Mm, Yeah, agreed. But Um, you can't just hide, like a lot of people try to hide from the numbers. They mm -hmm. try to hide from their budget. They try to just not even pay attention to it and say like, I know it's not good, but if if I don't open the closet and look at all the trash that's in there. No one will know. No one will know. And if I, out of sight, out of mind. Right. But it's there. Yeah, so true. I think that I, I piggyback off with what you're saying as well. Awareness is the key. Awareness is first and foremost. So if you're listening to this and going, these numbers sound outrageous and I don't think that they're reasonable or whatever. Cool. Bet. You need to kind of go toe to toe, go to toe to toe with this data and you need to look at yours. In terms of these categories, where do you stand? How much are you spending on transportation, on housing, on personal, on entertainment, on debt, on healthcare? If you were going to put this into different categories, how much are you spending? How much did you spend in the last month, August? And so if you think about that and you're looking at how much you spent, that's where that awareness comes to light where you're able to say, you know what? I could probably put a lot more, at, like, does this reflect my values? How, what is in the way of me being able to save more, feel better about what I'm bringing in. Am I happy with the way that I spent my money this past month? Like these are all questions that are going to allow you to really be on the cusp of saying, I need to make a change. And even if that change is like tweaking those categories ever so slightly so that you're able to put more into savings or put more additionally into debt, into your debt, like that is going to help you so much more in the long run than if you just forget about it or just ignore it. No, I agree. And let's just talk about some of the categories that are not listed here as well. Oh, good call. Yeah. Right. Because maybe vacation is wrapped into entertainment, Mm -hmm. but we have our own separate vacation fund. Yes. That we put 152 in every month. Your telephone, Mm -hmm. maybe they've wrapped that into utilities, Mm -hmm. but probably not, right? Your own personal mobile device. For us, that's 150 for the two lines, mm-hmm. right? And we talked about investments, the 529s, the Roths, like all of those things We're are absent. In there. So you have to factor in those things too because you have to plan for your retirement. Social security, pensions, that stuff's great. But at 30 years from now, like maybe that's gas money. It, yeah. You know, but it's, it's certainly not gonna be something that's life-sustaining. So you need to be, taking care of your own never if you're depending on the government to take care of you like that's that's not going to happen if if there's a lot of people right now who are recognizing who are waiting for there there's a there's a camp of people who have just been waiting and twiddling their thumbs and waiting for the government to say we're going to relieve you of all student loans and i feel so bad because this is three years in the making and three years where any a myriad of things could have happened in those three years. I wanted that to happen. I really, I did. I mean, I would have loved Who to see a lot of people, people to, to have that. To have 10 grand knocked off their student loans. That'd be amazing. And there are a lot of like student loan, like forgiveness pr- like programs. I've been seeing it on social every once in a while. And that's great. But I... I'm not a person who believes that somebody else needs to do the saving for me. Um, I sometimes I got to get to work. And so I, I I don't know if it were me, I would have been putting as much as I possibly could towards my, my student loan while there was no additional interest accruing. If that was an extra $10,000 I get great, but at least I'm not going to be caught (laughs) going, I could have put more towards my debt this whole time. And instead I'm like right back where I was. And now there's interest. So what I, I think to fill in what you were saying student loan interest and payment stopped. Yeah. I still would have kept yes. paying myself yes. in my own bank account. Yes. No, I wouldn't give a dime to Sally Mae Navy and whatever. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm, it would be mm-hmm. building up. So maybe let's say my student loan payment was $700 a month. 
every month I would still be making that $700 payment Mm -hmm. because I was used to it anyway. Like I had to pay it. Yeah. So I'm going to be filling a separate checking account every month with Mm -hmm. $700 Mm -hmm. hoping Mm -hmm. that this 10 grand gets knocked off. Right. And if it does. And if it does, sweet. I just got a whole bunch of money in this bank account. I've got money in this bank account that I can throw at the rest of my loans Mm -hmm. or I have. I have a down payment. Like, I mean, I have something. But the point is... No, for three years, if they canceled that, I wouldn't say, hey, that 700 is mine then. I'm going to spend it however I want. That's what so many people did. And I'm sure a lot of people did. Went out and bought a car, <sighs> got a house, went into more debt. It's just heartbreaking to hear that it's it's coming to this again, that people are going to be like, oh my gosh, you were supposed to save me. And I'm like, no one's, no one's going to save you. <laughs> <laughs> What's going to save you? Um, but to your point, right, getting back on track, because getting back on track, there are several different types of, 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 of categories that are not mentioned here. These are just the main categories, right? So again, like we mentioned that insurances have like that bi- biannual or yearly thing, but there's a lot of other expenses that are yearly that you might forget about. There's the vacations. There's, um, you know, we talked about kids and how back to school, like when back to school comes back. Christmas, Hanukkah. Christmas, holidays. Catches yep. us off guard every year. Every year, even though Black it happens Friday. the same time, every single year, additional shopping Cyber like Monday. that. Yeah, like stuff like that occurs. So like, how do you get ahead of that? Because I hear a lot of people who are like, but how do I, every single time I get to this point of the year and I forget about it every single year, goodness gracious and you gotta in order to do that you have to get ahead of it and what we do is we create a line item and just like you mentioned about the seven hundred dollars going into a different checking account that's what you call a sinking fund so we use sinking funds in our lifestyle that's how we keep our lifestyle and it's not so that way we can keep our life going even if there's stuff happening in our life it's not going to impact the things that we are trying to do in the future. So for example, we put $200 into repairs and tires for our car every single month. So every single month, whether we use it or not, $200 is going into this account that's specifically for our auto fund. And we just put it in there so that when it's time to go, like, you know, you just took the car to get detailed and get like, you know, oil changes and stuff like that. And they said, hey, you're going to need to pay for some type of filter and whatever. And it's going to cost like a hundred and, you know, 50 bucks. Okay. Like it's not, it's nothing off our backs. We already had that taken care of. And that's not a big deal when we go back next time to get that taken care of. That is what it looks like to become financially, um, having our values in check and being financially free, right? It's, it's getting ahead of those things that are always going to pop up. (laughs) Like the little, uh, you know, like groundhog, like, Hey, I'm, I'm like, you're, I'm, I'm making it harder for you to get to your ideal destination. What we do is we put money aside so that those little hiccups don't derail us from our total goal of being, um, you know, of recruiting more savings, of investing or whatever. We want as many guardrails in place so that we can still keep going forward. Absolutely. So what's the CTA here? People have all these categories that should be in their written plan uh, some they might have heard, maybe some they have not. Some they might spend too much in, some they might spend too little. And really that's their part, like they need to feel yeah. I spend too much or I spend too little because it truly doesn't matter how much you spend of each category. It's all about your life. Everyone your has a lifestyle. Yeah. And you want to keep your lifestyle. So in order to keep your lifestyle, is the income going up? Mm-hmm. Are different category expenses going down? What are you going to do to maintain or to increase your lifestyle? So Mm -hmm. what's our CTA here? This is a big CTA. I was thinking about it and I'm like, listen, I'm going to give you guys a big challenge. This is something we would probably do in our pocket coaching or I would give to my my actual one-on-one client. So you guys are in for a treat. So I'm going to give you guys a really big CTA. And if you are, if you're, if you're bold enough, I want you to do this. Go get your statement of the many places that you spend, right? So if you spend from your credit card and you spend from your debit card and you spend from, bring all of those statements from last month, the last 30 days to your table. And I want you to look at them and I want you to categorize them, right? Use the categories and I'll say it again as housing, transportation, food, personal care, entertainment, 
debt, and healthcare, right? Healthcare, medical. You can put whatever you want in those categories. So as you look at certain things, don't overthink it, just put it into a category. And as you add it up, I want you to ask yourself, are you happy with what this looks like? The next step that you need to do is think about your particular values. What values are important to you and where do you want your money to go? What's the most important thing to you? Do you desire, is what's more more important to you? Is it savings? Is it investing? Is it going out to eat? Is it having a social life where you're able to have people over to your house or whatever? Like, what does that look like? And what dollar amount is connected to that? When you have an understanding of what that looks like on a monthly basis, you're starting to create your own specific budget. And that is how you start building a budget that is very value-based, that is also focused and, 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 and has purpose as opposed to just spending money because you want to spend money. Um, if you want more support in this, I would love for you guys to, to hang out with us in our Millionaire Blueprint. Um, our Millionaire Blueprint is right now, it is, it, we are still undercover putting it, it's on sale. Okay. So I'm not going to put the price out there, but I will tell you it's, it's very inexpensive. It's a no brainer for you. <laughs> um, so there might be a link down in the comments in the show description. And if you're catching this like in uh, September of 2023, you need to make sure you get in there now because in October, the price goes up. So you want to get in there. That's going to be huge. And we're walking you through exactly how to not only build your ideal value based budget and money plan, but also how to communicate with your spouse so that you both can be on the same page living out your ideal lifestyle that you desire. So that's my big like that's a big cta it's massive it's massive but if you are serious about seeing financial like freedom um you'll do it 100 percent. that's it <laughs> guys thank you so much for joining us today go live in love walk in wealth take care y'all bye Bye.